Guys, go check out our Patreon where you can get our daily morning show and next week's episode today. Welcome back to the quarantined basement yard. Uh, we are doing this from my office, Danny's living room, I think. Yes, I have a couch now. Oh. Ah. First of all, you have the biggest couch I've ever seen in my entire days. My entire life, I've always wanted a couch that was a bed. I have a bed couch. It's huge. Dude, that is like... You remember in Willy Wonka when they just like pushed five beds together so all the old people who couldn't walk like slept there all for the rest of their lives? Yep. That's what your fucking couch looks like. You I can know. fit fucking all the whole cast from Willy Wonka on that shit. Yeah. All the, the whole sick old people or whatever. Uh, we, um, we, we slept out here. I slept... Just as good out here than I do on my king size Helix mattress. Well, it's a fucking huge couch. Yeah, it's huge. And it's wide have, as shit. Do you have any sort of room left in your living room for uh, a lamp or something? Uh, it's going to be tough to get a lamp in here. I can get one lamp and I definitely have to put my TV on the wall because if I don't, there's like, there's a lot of squeezing. There's just a ton of squeezing, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Squ- squeezing season. If I eat one more fucking pop tart, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get through my door. Did you so finish? A, did you finish the pop tarts yet? N- no, no, no. I've swore off the pop tarts in nice. uh, in all reality. I'm swearing off of the uh, Tootsie Rolls because my mom, you know, like the, they're called midgets. Not I didn't do it. I'm pretty sure they're called midgets or like midgies or like. If it's called midgy, that's midget. That's one hundred percent is midget. Oh, they're they're midgies. They 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 change that for but that, sure. But that means midget. Yeah, they're. That's just a cute way of calling a midget a midget. Oh, the to- little the little midgies. Tootsie Rolls, the company is kind of, uh, you know, not racist, but something towards uh, dwarfism, because they call their their smaller Tootsie Rolls midgies. Yeah. But I love them. I love them. I love a small Tootsie Roll. Oh. Great suckable candy. Lo- yeah. Oh my god, dude! I put it on the top of my the roof of my mouth and just go, like like, like a, a <laughs> like a little doggy with peanut butter. Yeah, or like an iguana, like trying to get a fly. Yeah. Speaking of iguanas, here we go. Have you ever thought about how like New York we have like deers and rats and raccoons and shit? But if you mm-hmm. go like down south, like their rats are iguanas. Yeah. Which is wild. Just be like, oh, uh, iguana got into the garbage again. <laughs> I don't think they eat garbage. They, like, eat flies. I don't know what the fuck an iguana eats, but maybe there's fresh fruit in that garbage. You don't do you know. know what, do you know what cockroaches eat? Everything. I looked it, I looked it up. Yeah, it's everything. It's they everything. Eat shit. The decayed carcasses of other cockroaches, by the way. By the way I, and I, I flip-flop from cockroach to cockroach. I, 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 I usually say cockroach. I, I like to make it sound like a dance, like a cockroach or something. Cockroach you know what I mean? or, like, or, or papa roach. Just like, damn, he's hitting the cockroach. Also, the papa roach cut my life into pieces! Gung, gung. It's a fucking great song. Um, but yeah, cockroaches, they just eat everything. They eat the wall. You know what I'm saying? Like, Do they eat everything. They, they eat wood, yeah. They eat they wood, They eat yeah. e- Bro, everything. Name it. They eat it. Uh, porcelain dogs. Yep. Yeah, uh, that might be tough to eat. That shit is hard. Uh, uh, also, let's get rid of porcelain dolls. Let's retire that because they're creepy. They get haunted very easily. All the haunted dolls are porcelain. I so feel let's like, just throw them out. Yeah. I feel like every every doll has to be complete with someone's dead soul in it. That's yes. how that works. You need a yes. dead soul of like an old carpenter's wife. Who jam- died in a fire. Yeah, jammed into that porcelain soul. And the way that... Yeah. I hate when they get like the one lazy eye like this one doesn't open. And you gotta Mm -hmm. squeeze it, and it goes (laughs) to get it to work. Why do all those porcelain dolls get one lazy eye? Get a better eye in there. I don't know. I don't don't, know. They're disgusting. I don't get it. This is what goes through my mind during quarantine. I don't think that dolls. I don't think dolls should have human eyes on them. What's what's up with the doll? Remember that doll that could piss its pants? Excuse me. Like, like Polly Polly piss pants or some shit. It's definitely not Polly Pocket. She doesn't do that. She just stays out in the sun and in your pocket. There She's is not a, pissing her pants. There's a doll that pisses its pants, and it's like, oh no, she peed her pants. Let's change the diaper. And why what do the fuck? 
Why do little girl babies want babies so much? Is it because they want a friend? Like, why do you want to be a mom already? Fucking live your life. What the hell yeah, is wrong chill. With that? Go to college and go through your whore phase before you want on a child, little yeah. idiot. Yeah, go get thrashed. Get go, get, yeah, go get your heart broken by a jock on the football team first before yeah. you pick up this doll that pisses itself. Let your heart get broken by a dude named Chad at least once and then worry about having babies. Marry a doctor. You, you, now you're a single mother from the jump. You're a single mother. Single mom off the bat? Let's off teach the us that. Can we teach this like child about love before we just let it have a... Dude, what kind of kid, what kind of parent is like, I know what I'm going to get my daughter. I'm going to get her a fucking responsibility. She's one. If any of my toys piss their pants, I throw them out. Would you say I'm women, done? Would you say women are more responsible than men? It's literally not even close. So maybe that's why, though. Maybe it's because they start by raising a fake plastic baby from the jump, and we have guns and shit. Guns? Yeah. You we gotta, got... Who gave you a gun as a baby? Not real guns, but I had guns. You had guns? I had guns. And then I would get like little ray guns that go skee go 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 oh, Remember yeah, those? I love that. You remember, remember uh, the fucking, what's that called? Where you shoot ducks on the wall? Oh, yeah, yeah, duck yeah. Hunter. Duck hunt. Duck hunt. Duck hunt. Yeah. And oh, then dog God. will come out and be like. <laughs> I'd be I like, just blast that dog by accident. Bra, 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 bra. That, that game's kind of fucked up now that you think about it. Yeah. Women are, women are born and immediately put into nurturing uh, another human being. We're born. All we want to do is kill everyone. We want to shoot ducks. Why do we want to kill everyone as kids? I wanted to kill every everyone around me. Yeah. Yo, Doom, GoldenEye, Call of Duty, Duck Hunt. Like everyone's getting a shotgun blast. Yeah, girls. You know what I'm saying? I know there's you know there's girls out there like video games, obviously, and they like killing people too. But what I'm saying is, from the jump, we're pretty pre like, we're we're pre programmed to start murdering. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why uh, do pigeons walk like that? I don't know. They have stupid necks. <laughs> they really... Like, what? How is this efficient at all? How are you not tired? You ever see when those pigeons are on, like, the subway? Like, in the train? Yeah, they're on the train. Yeah, and they, like, walk out, like, oh, I gotta go at 59th. Like, yo, where are you going? To fucking work, pigeon? Yeah. <laughs> Get the fuck off the train. Did also, you can fly. The train's definitely slower. That's what I'm saying. Fly Those are, there. St- those are dumb pigeons. Did you know that homeless people eat pigeons in New York? Like, they'll catch pigeons and eat them. Okay. No. Yes. 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 Who told you that? A homeless guy? A, fr- a friend of a, hom- a, friend of a friend, a f- homeless friend. You ha- you're, you're, you have a degree of separation for someone who's homeless, catching pigeons, and fucking eating them? Everybody has six How degrees. How are they cooking them? Everybody has six degrees of homeless separation. We all Okay, do. six is a ton of degrees. I'm talking about what you said, like one step, one degree. I could think it took me four steps to get to somebody I know that's homeless. Let me, let me ask you something. Okay. How the and fuck? I, and I was one of them at one point. How, how did you cook a pigeon? No, I didn't cook a pigeon. I just slept on my friend Zach's couch. That's not really homeless. No, that, that that's that's nomadic. That's you know. that, that's couch, you're a vagabond. Yeah, that's couch surfing. I'm a vagabond. <laughs> yes, yes. How you do know, homeless I, people cook pigeons, or they just eat them raw? They just bite their heads clean dude, off. Dude, homeless people can make fire, dude. They can get matches and shit from places. Cook that fucking pitch. Uh, uh, and then burn what? They could do it over a trash can. Homeless people have been turning trash cans into ovens and stoves and barbecue pits since the early 60s. Okay. Maybe I even have... the early 40s. I've seen that in movies, but when was the last time you went out in the street and you're like, it smells like fire. And they're like, oh, it's just the homeless guy's cooking dinner. Never. <laughs> no, never. But nothing would make me feel more like, oh my God. Then if I walked by and saw a whole bunch of homeless people, and another thing about homeless people, why do you guys cut the tips off your gloves? So they keep can them have on. grip. Yeah, but keep it on because you're gonna get cold at night. Your fingertips, your yeah. extremities. Yeah. And homeless people always hold cups like this, like it's the first glass of milk they've had in ages. It probably is piece of shit. 
I don't know how people double hand drink like that. That's impossible for me. I understand double handing coffee sometimes because like if I'm feeling like a ooh. good crisp morning, it makes me feel warm. Like ooh, it makes me feel like everything's gonna be all right and like the day's gonna be all right, which it yeah. never is. But no, you it's know. not gonna be okay. No, at all. It, everything sucks. Everything's shit. Everything's shit. But um, yeah, but I'm trying to do the best that I can now. Dude, at this point. how disgusting would it be if you were to walk down the street or you walk through a park? And there's like four homeless dudes just cooking a stray cat. Now, there's two ways I'm going to go about this. Okay. Are they singing doo-wop? Of course not. Okay. Because if they're like... I'd be like, nope. all right, cook that cat. The song's good. Yeah, but I don't think you'd cook... You'd cook a cat and sing. I think that like at night after we've eaten the cat... We'll do some do up for dessert or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I feel like there's two things that homeless people are very good at. Lighting trash cans on fire that for some reason only everything in the trash can stays on fire. And singing do up songs. And spitting when they talk. When our parents were kids, yeah, they do that. The homeless people love to spit. And it's so white and dry. It's so gross. Please homeless stop. spit is gross. Homeless spit's not amazing. It's definitely not appetizing. It's disgustingly gross. My least favorite spit Icky, by far. Icky, sticky, nasty, gross. I, everything yeah. about it makes me sick. But did <laughs> yeah. you know that when our parents were... Literally could make you sick. If a homeless man spits on you, you you're sick. Oh, yeah. Uh, our parents grew up in an era where they would just walk around and there'd be four dudes on their street like... like They, like, they literally lived in a time like that. If you saw that now, you would freak the fuck out. I'd be like, yo, chill, man. It's a ritual going down. The, there's, a, there's sacrifices birds down the street. Guys would guys would be like, yo, you know what? Let's all go down to like 49th and 1st under the street light and let's just sing. Yeah. Not only that, but our parents were like friends with the milkman. Like yeah. he'd, sh- he'd show up and just like walk into your house with the milk like, oh, hey, Betty, here you go. Meanwhile, yo, the other day, a guy, we ordered food. He just walked in our house and put the fucking thing, like, right at the door. And we we're like, what the fuck are you doing? Get out of here. Yeah, get out of my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I drove I drove by your house yesterday, two days ago. And I was going to send it to you and be like, come out of your house right now, you fucking pussy. Like, something funny to be like, well, I'm too scared to leave your house. Then I got home and realized... I'm just going to say it. 100% afraid to leave my house at this point. <laughs> 100%. What do you 100%. mean afraid? Because everyone's scaring me. They're all like, oh, Danny, you're so high risk. My family calls me Dooney. That's what they call me. Yeah. So they're like, oh, Dooney, you're diabetic and asthmatic. Please don't go outside. Oh, my God, son, please. No, don't do that. Oh, my. Oh, my. So now in my head, now I'm afraid that if I go outside and take one breath of air from outside... I will disappear like Spider-Man in Endgame. That's what, I, that's, that's what I'm afraid. Spoiler alert, by the way. Yeah, if you haven't seen that, especially during this quarantine, what the fuck are you... What the fuck are you waiting for? Um, Yeah, no. I mean, you're not going to get it like that. I just wouldn't, you know, go somewhere and, you know, let a stranger breathe in your mouth or anything like that. No, and then I also heard that masks are not protective. No. Could so why wear a mask? Well, you're supposed to wear a mask if you are sick so that you don't, like, projectile, yeah, like, it's, spit it's at sh- people. It's shared by droplet. Right. So people, when they talk, obviously there's some, you know, whenever yeah. the light hits you a certain way and someone's talking, like, it's got spitting everywhere. I cleaned all my credit cards last night. You cleaned your credit cards? Yeah, and my wallet and my, wallet and my phone case. <laughs> don't laugh. I- I clean my phone case. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back to this conversation about how you never thought this was going to be a thing ever. <laughs> I'm just, I just think it's funny that you're cleaning your credit cards like you're going to use them because no, you can't go anywhere. I've been using Apple Pay. You're going well. Stop going to stores. I had to go to Eli's Deli. Oh wow, you went all the way there. That's pretty deep. Yeah, yeah. I had to go there, and I literally went in there, and I maybe took two inhales of breath. <laughs> I was like, where's, like, where's <laughs> can I pay, sugar? Can I pay for this? Why are you purple, sir? What's going on? 
Apple Pay. You guys take Apple Pay. <laughs> but one guy Not- came up to me. Yo, there's some. Speaking of homeless, there are some homeless all stars that live around this area. Yeah, yeah. And they are the fucking walking dead right now. What does that mean? Because, dude, when I was walking into Eli's, as I came out and I got back into my car, I heard just a guy coming around the corner. I said, oh, all right, somebody else is out. Just literally just from the chest. And I was like, you know what? This is how people fucking die. Because this yeah. fucking weirdo is just strolling the streets. Yeah. I heard homeless people can like go sleep in Madison Square Garden now. That's the last Nick game I ever go to. Yeah. And I think Barclays Center is doing it too. No, that's actually, that makes sense. That's nice of them to do that. Yeah. James Dolan has it. Yeah. No. That's uh, all I'm going to say about uh, that. Uh, <laughs> uh, James, come on the show. Great guy. Come on. Show. Oh, Jimmy Dolan. All right. So there's, there's two things I really want to address with you. We're 15 minutes in small okay. talk, small talks over. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's get to the big talk. Let's get to the big talk. And the big talk is this. Yeah. Joe has been sending me screenshots of his <laughs> running, his running, which I'm very, I'm very, I get very proud when Joe is exercising. I think it helps him mentally. And then two, he, he, he lays off me a little bit. So, so it works when Joe's in a good mood, the world's in a good mood. I don't think Joe knows how much my life revolves around him. I wish he would know. Um, so, now, a part of me, though, wants to understand where this is coming from. Is this a, a coming from, like, yo, I want to inspire you, bro. I want you to see me out here. Or is it just being like, yo, I want you to see this. That's No, what, I just want you to see it. I just want the, yeah, I just want to know where the mentality is coming from. Are you rubbing it in, 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 my, in my butt cheeks? Are you rubbing it in these brown cheeks? No, I'm not rubbing it in. What I am is just seeking major validation. I've realized this. Uh, about two days ago. Yeah. And this is going to sound like a shocker to some, but I realized that I need attention really bad. Dude, you know who's shocked by that? <coughs> Not even the fucking cat-eating homeless men. <laughs> I just called them homeless men. Homeless. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, like it's a fucking, like it's a rank in the military. We're going to deploy our homeless men. Stand down, homeless men. <laughs> Corporal home homeless man. Homeless in Jackson. <laughs> uh, We're going to deploy you. You know, no, but I, I, it really hit me though. Like I, I am just, I think I've been, I've been like this my whole life. Yeah. yeah. I've been uh, an attention seeking <laughs> whore. You're yeah. You're a whore. We're all whores though. We're um, all but, whores for attention. We all want attention, but I think I'm just bad. I think I'm bad. You know what it is? Like the runs that I've been going on, I've been seriously impressing myself because I, I have never ran this well in my life. And it's not even that crazy. But like today, this morning, it was like raining. It was disgusting out. But I was like, I'm just going to fucking go anyway. And I ran two and a half miles under an eight, eight minute pace. That's 749 pace. Which is like, you know, that's a pr- pretty decent time. But it's not like stupendous. But it's fucking amazing for me. Oh, yeah. I was like, how the fuck is two days ago, I ran 2.6 miles at like an eight. 40 pace. Yeah, see, you're, you're hitting all your, like, physical marks right now. I hit mine very early in the quarantine. I beat a woman in a race, and then, yeah. you know, I, I, I do my 100 push-ups, and that's that. I Are think you still I, doing that? Yeah. We just do, like, 10 periodically throughout the day? like sets no, 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 I'll try to do, like, uh, 5 sets of 20, uh, or I'll do, like, 10 sets of 10. Like during like commercials or like shit like that, just to get it in, because I I, need, I feel like one of those people who are in a coma and they have to come in and like move your muscles around and like shake you to like make <laughs> yeah. sure like blood flow works. So yeah. like I've been I've been doing that just to try and keep myself uh somewhat active because I, I wanted to go for walks and I know I can go for walks, everybody I know, but I'm afraid. Yeah, I'm honestly afraid to go for walks. Well, you don't live in a pop not. A- I would say like a populated part of town. Like yeah. you could walk and not see anyone probably. Dude, when I was in the car yesterday, ghost town. Yeah. It's, not one no person was in the streets and it was 3.30 in the afternoon on a Saturday. I well, saw maybe one person. 
I I don't I think I went running at like 10 a.m. or maybe a little before that. I saw like two people the whole time. Yeah, it's wild, dude. And they both were running. <laughs> but then I see a story of Park, and you got people with children there. Yeah, you got people doing all this shit. What's going on? They should shut the parks. But like the thing is, like as long as you're keeping a distance from people, like you'll be all right. Like it's not like if you're at least to my knowledge, like if you're running on the track at Astoria Park and someone coughs 10 feet ahead of you, it's not like you're going to like get it. Yeah. Well, also- but there are, there are a lot of people like on the workout shit over there and they're like fucking using <coughs> everything and like Pete. doing whatever. Pete, huh? Ralph, Ralph, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're at, they're at a different park. Go home. Yeah. I, I don't Enough. Know. Enough. We get it. You work Did out inside your house. You can do the same shit inside your house. Order a fucking pull-up bar, okay? <laughs> World needs Pete. Yeah, I stop. Yeah, World they do. needs Ralph. Yeah, I'm getting tired of it, and they're not gonna make my friends list that comes out tomorrow because they're exercising <laughs> outside. Yeah, and Dom's gonna make it because he said he could give me a haircut. Yeah. I'm he actually be... sent me a picture today of him cutting his own hair. If I tried to cut my own hair, I would look like a fucking psycho. Yeah. I would look like Billy Idol. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Idol's the man, though. Uh, other thing I need to address, you took a really sexy, wet, like, portrait mode picture. It wasn't and portrait it, mode. It looked like it. Nah, just the gods blessed me uh, for some reason. Just lighting was slapping. It was, yeah, it was, it lighting, was absolutely... Yeah, that lighting slapped so hard. I was so uh, jealous. Yeah. But a part of me is thinking, mm-hmm. is thinking, I want, I wanted to ask this question between us and have us discuss it. Which one of us do you think needs attention more? You. It, 100%. 100%, right? Yeah. I I'm, think not, I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to fight you on it. I'm not fighting you on it. I think I'm well above, I don't, <laughs> I think I'm well above the average. Right. I just think that you're, you're, you're like, you're up there. I, I need I need attention from others. I, I'll yeah. t- I'll text you just monotonous nonsense <laughs> because I just I need I need the touch of another person. I long for another person's. Yeah, you yearn for it. I yearn for it. I yearn for it. But I do want to say I did have a very great experience on Instagram Live about two days ago. Okay. Uh, I went live and sometimes I go live at night for like an hour, and I just play like lo-fi music. And, like, I just let people talk about, like, what they're going through, like, mental health-wise going on during this time. Because it's a it's a big topic. It's a big struggle for a lot of people. Yeah. So, so like, it's nice to do stuff like that when you have, like, a platform to do it. And at once, I was like, all right, it's not about me. But later on, I'm like, ah, oh, I guess it is kind of about me. I, like, I, ha- I, I have a hard time trying to know like what it is you know you've seen me off camera obviously once yeah. or tw- once or twice you once know that you know the type of person that i am though mm-hmm. i'm a very giving try to help people when i can whatever now i feel like there's a fine line between spreading awareness and just being like yo look at this great thing i did yes i think me knowing the person that i am i didn't really do that for attention but if I send a picture of me twerking my ass, I'm looking for attention. <laughs> if that makes any sense. You know what it is? Like things like that are very it the line is so blurred and you never know who's being genuine and who's just like this is just a thing that will spark engagement or like I just need to talk to people. I don't know. It's like it's a, it's a tough thing because you see someone who goes on the street and they're like, we're going to give a hundred dollars to random homeless people yeah. and they turn, they turn it into a thing. And I don't necessarily have a gigantic problem with that. I have a problem when people make their entire ch- like YouTube channel, like doing shit like that. Right. I, I don't know. It just, it just seems, some of it seems very weird. Like there's a kid, his name is Mr. Beast and he fucking gives crazy shit away he like builds houses for people like he does crazy stuff and you can just like tell like i guess you could just tell that he's genuine right but there's there's other people that you're like this clearly feels like you're capitalizing and like trying to monetize 
like this. It, it just you could just tell with people, you know. And so it's yeah, like it's, it's, it's it hard. happened to me. It happened to me that time around Christmas. I saw that same homeless guy that lived in my old neighborhood all the time. And I asked him. I was like, "Yo, is it all right if I film?" And he's like, "Yeah, it's fine." Asked him for it, and I and I posted it. And then like, I mean, even you like came to my aid. It's like, "Yo, I've seen Danny do this mad times." So like, shut the fuck up. But yeah. like, like it is. It's like it is an intention. An intention. It's very easy to be like, "Oh, this is fucking bullshit." Yeah, I mean, it's just like I said. It's I don't know everyone on the internet, so I could see someone who just posted like a random video out of nowhere and be like, "Oh, look what I'm doing for this homeless person." And it's like, "Are you doing this because you're trying to get your engagement up and you know that people would enjoy this, or that right. they can't say anything bad about it because it's like you're doing a nice thing, or?" Are you this type of person? But I understand that way of, of thought, though, for people to think, like, oh, this is a sham. Not that it's a sham, but it's just like, yo, this is corny. Like, you're like you're doing this to, like, help your page. You're not doing it to, like, help people. Like, you right. have yourself in mind right. first. You're like, oh, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone, do a nice thing, but it's really going to help my page. Like, you know, I, I don't know. It's It's, like I said, it's a very blurred thing for me. I just like to create safe spaces for people to just fucking talk about what they're fucking afraid of like well, everyone's think, afraid of shit i think right now too like a lot of people who have like anxiety and like depression or whatnot like being in your house is like the fucking worst sucks and for me that's what like triggers everything for me is like being locked into one zone and like not being around people and that's why i like basically picked up my shit and moved to my mom's house because i need to be around other people like my sister is there like every day like, we're all there just, like, hanging out. So, it's, like, you get distracted in that. And I, I've been trying to, like, set a schedule for myself. Like, yo, go running. Like, fucking read. Like, I've been, I read two books already. Like, I'm already reading a third one. Book Joe. Uh, Wanted to get into Book Joe, too. Book Joe. Yeah, so, like, just setting these things. Because it's, like, on a day-to-day, you usually do stuff that you don't want to do. Yeah. But it, like, keeps you. Cause, so, I don't want it to just be completely relaxed and completely comfortable and be like, well, this is my time off. It's, like... That would drive me insane, and that would start to make me depressed, and I would slowly go crazy. So I need to do things that are, like, uncomfortable that I don't necessarily want to do, but are, like, I don't know. Yeah, no, I feel you. It's gotten to that point, it's like, yo, like, I mean, thankfully, like, whatever, like, my girl's here. So that's been helping me, like, not go fucking wild, but I could see where people who, like, are fully alone, like, how fucking treacherous that has to be. Yeah, it's trash, dude. Just, like, how fucking bad. And if you're sick, too, on top of that, it's even fucking worse. Yeah, then you gotta get sick. Yeah. That shit is, what the fuck? I saw that there might not be a vaccine for this thing for about a year or two years. Well, yeah. Probably. If, you, single- had, if, if you had corona and they offered you 10 grand to tr- do, like, clinical trials on you, would you do it? I'd do that shit. I mean, I don't know. Just uh, fucking t- shoot me up. I don't know. I just I think eventually what's gonna happen they're gonna be able to test for like antibodies and see if it, you if you had it and it's gone now and you're immune and if that's the case I would get that test because if I know I'm immune then I'm like oh I'm good yeah. like then you could like go anywhere help anybody or like do whatever you need to do and like you know you're kind of straight yeah I mean I wouldn't just like go out there and start like you know whatever because there's still other people in my house that I'm staying in that I could potentially like carry it to yeah. yeah. That's but. why you. That's why I was like, get out of the park, especially to you. Yeah, yeah. R- Ralph and Pete, you know, they spit in each other's mouths. So if they're gonna get it, they're gonna get it. Yeah. You know. So I was like, yo, you need to go home. <laughs> and then you were like, you need to go home. And I was like, let's both go home. Yeah. Let's that's both. That's basically go home. how that went. That's I, how, that's how the conversation went. It was a good combo. The way that I, wh- I, th- I went to the park twice to work out, and when I was when I would get home. From, from that, like, I would be very cautious of not touching, like, whatever. Like, the clothes that I was wearing, I would just put in the laundry. I would I would wash my hands, like, up to my elbow, basically. Like, I'm about to perform fucking surgery. And then I would Clorox wipe, like, my phone and shit. That's so I'd scary. be like... I don't, I don't want to have to re-sterilize. I don't want to have to re-sterilize. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, all right, let me get into these ads real quick, and then we have to jump into a fucking serious topic. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But also, just real quick, Book Joe, hopefully... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's here to stay, hopefully. I think Book Joe's here to stay, and here's why. Okay. I think the more you read, 
the more it will be co- like I feel like you were more of a one book guy like yeah I got through this book and like that was it and it was hard for you to pick up book number two now that you've picked up book number two and book number three I think you're just gonna be rolling into it now I think you just have this one thing that's gonna be like yo this helps me you're finding it as a as a comfort thing now I yeah I feel like it's just there's I feel so much satisfaction in finishing it I know and you're gonna you know be I mean? you're gonna be smarter and just smugger than ever. I cannot oh, wait. Oh my god! Wait till the, you hear the words I'm gonna start using on this it, fucking show. Have you seen? Have you seen? Like, kind of in the comments, people have been like, "Oh, like Danny's like, uh, like uh, Danny's uh, uh, egotistical or like something like that." Or like, I've seen these comments in there. No. What the fuck is that about? <laughs> Where'd you see that? I, I saw him in a, in a in a couple of things. Where? Uh, uh, the one when we did uh, Everyone's Ugly, and I was like, I don't think I'm ugly. And then people jumped all over me. They said I was an egotistical oh, man. Oh, it's a show, you f- miserable bitches. I know, that's what it is. I just wish they could tell. I just wish they could tell. <laughs> you got booked, You got book Joe now, all right? You yeah. got... You, you want got... to see some ego? Dude, I did a 740 mile. If I bring this fucking mile under seven minutes... Dude, we're never going to hear the end of this thing. Ever. Never. Uh, I love every I love everybody, okay. I don't I, I I'm not it's a it's a show, just let it be a show, all right. And uh, the other the other thing I wanted to say is, uh, I think reading for you though, it, you're gonna find it to be <coughs> therapeutic at some point. I think I think it's getting to that point. After the third one, it's like does it it loses that like oh I have to read this book now it's just something you do. Yeah, I mean. If- well, the first book I read was about creating and breaking habits. It's called Atomic Habits by James Clear. And it was fucking... Like, it wasn't... Cabbage like, rabbits. <laughs> so, I read I that... I fuck off TikTok, you know? <laughs> Yo, we watched that shit like a hundred times last night. That shit was fucking hysterical. Yeah. I had to do it to him, yeah, man. <laughs> for real, for real. <laughs> um, but... So it's just about like basically, you know, a part of it is like, I was interested in the book because it was more about like the science behind what parts of your brain can create a habit, no matter okay. how like ridiculous or how like whatever. Can you um, drop, can you drop some quick knowledge? It's, well, the, the book is the fucking process. So I can't like really do a good job of summarizing it. Mm. The only thing that I can say, like, obviously part of it is consistency and, and repetition. And, like, the idea of reading for me, it starts off as something like, I've never really been a reader in my entire life. I would like to be, and I can, and I definitely feel a sense of satisfaction when I finish a book. Or even when I block out, like, an hour and I do some reading. Like, I, that's a part of me that feels good for the day. Yeah. And, like, there's not enough of those things. There weren't an, enough of those things like during my days that were like consistent enough that no matter what, at least I'd feel some sort of satisfaction during the day. Like there'd be some days where no video goes out. Uh, I don't like, I get some work done, whatever, but I don't really count that. But like no video goes out. Like I don't post anything and like this and that, but even if those days still happen and they will happen, like it's not like everything every day is something has to go out. But like, right. If there is not that there's, well, I ran this morning and I read for an hour and I'm almost done with this book and like blah, 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 blah. So like there's these little things that of like just keeping yourself, like rewarding yourself in a way of like getting that satisfaction rather than just putting everything into like waiting for big projects to be finished. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. It does. But we'll see. Um, all right. Let's get to these ads. Let's uh, pay the bills. Let's pay the fucking bills here. Um, the first one we have is Fiverr. Okay, Fiverr is a platform that helps keep businesses moving with a network of trusted freelance talent. Uh, whether you're launching your first business, business or scaling your current one, I've used Fiverr like mad times because of like graphic design. If I need like a logo or something, you could type in like I need graphic design. Find people who make logos. You get to choose from like all these people that put up these uh, profiles. And you get to choose like, oh, this one does dope stuff. This one does a 24-hour turnaround. It's really cool. And there's a lot of cool stuff and like good shit from this site. 
um, graphic design, copywriting, web programming, film editing, uh, go to Fiverr, type in anything you need. Chances are they probably have it, let's be honest. Um, but yeah, there's 24 seven customer service, um, quality shit, like I said. Um, you can look at uh, buyer feedback, so people have used them before, and they're like, oh, they got it to me in the time they said they would, and it was good stuff, like blah, 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 so you can find the thing that you need. Um, check out Fiverr today and receive 10% off your first order by using the code BASEMENT. Uh, again, that is Fiverr, spelled F-I-V-E-R-R, dot com, and the code is BASEMENT for 10% off of your first order, okay? Fiverr.com, uh, and the code is BASEMENT. Um, next is actually something that I just used because I got out of the shower, Native, okay? I smell like lavender because they have awesome soaps that are uh, free of parabens and other bad shit. Get those basically. parabens out of there, bro. You, you don't want that, saying? no talc either. Yeah, it's made with ingredients you've heard of, like coconut oil, shea butter. Um, you wear deodorant every day. Um, so you should know what's in that stuff because I've heard before, I don't know exactly what, but some, uh, deodorants are kind of dangerous and you don't want that. You want like organic stuff. That's like nice. Won't hurt you. Um, so a native makes that and with over 10 cents, including their classics and rotating seasonals, um, you're guaranteed to find one you like. I do have the coconut and vanilla one, which smells like a party. Love it. Smells delicious. I almost ate it. And then I have the soap that's lavender and rose, and it smells delicious, and it's amazing. So go check them out. Um, for 20% off your first purchase, visit native nativedeodorant.com slash basement. 20% off of your first purchase. Again, that is nativedeodorant.com slash basement. Go check them out. Uh, it is great. Uh, I only have that stuff in my, have all that stuff. Soap. You know what I'm saying? Deodorant. I smell like native. Um, lastly, we have BetterHelp. Uh, BetterHelp is... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm, str I'm stretching. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. BetterHelp is online counseling. Um, basically, you can go on and find a counselor that is available to talk via FaceTime, text, or what have you. Um, they have licensed professional. Was that a fart? No. Oh, my God. I thought that was a fart. No, no, no. Was it? Yep. Oh, my God, dude. I'm sorry. That is insane. Um, licensed professional counselors who are specialized in depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, sleeping, trauma, a bunch of different things. Um, and if you're not happy with your counselor for any reason, you can request a new one at any time, no additional charge. Uh, they're available worldwide and you can start communicating in under 24 hours. So if you're looking for some um, someone to talk to or some therapy or, or whatever, you go to betterhelp.com slash yard um, for 10% off of your first month. That is... Uh, betterhelp.com slash yard okay so definitely go check that out uh, betterhelp.com slash yard all right uh, and that's all that's all we have for today Dom just sent me two pictures of him cutting his hair how's it look looks pretty good looks yeah, damn good he's not bad but cutting your own hair seems impossible I would let him cut my hair dude you ever look at yourself in the mirror and then you see something on your face and you try to touch it, but you like go the opposite way. Yep. Like I can't imagine cutting my own fucking hair. Yep. It'd be impossible. Also, all right, we're going to get to it. Yep. And, th and this is, this is the thing. All right. What are you doing over there? Just, just <laughs> readjust. I'm sitting crisscross applesauce. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't get racist. Okay. With that, with that uh, Native American slander like last time. Learn, learn my less. I, I also am crisscross applesauce, uh, final boss right now. Mm. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Uh, Tiger King. What I a mean, show! What a show! I Tiger King is probably the most. Just wait, it gets better. Documentary I've ever seen. At no point. Did that documentary or whatever the fuck you want to call it slow down? It was like it started and you're like, this guy's crazy. And they're like, yo, this bitch is crazy. This guy's crazy too. Wait, what? Oh! Ah! And then like, this guy's it, riding a fucking elephant. Yeah, like what the fuck is going? This guy's got a ponytail, but he's bald. Like, how is this happening? First of all, big time, big dick power move if you're bald and have a ponytail. Dude. Fire. 
I don't know. If you have that haircut, you better be a fucking medicine man who and, lives and in he, the forest. And he is. The the thing I took away the most, uh, what, my favorite line from Tiger King is when he's filming the promo and he's like, I'm gay, I'm broke as shit. I was I've like, had, I've had a lot of sex. <laughs> I had a lot of sex. I was like, this guy is, first of all, an American, a cornerstone of America now. This guy is is one of the most ridiculous people I've ever seen grace God's green earth, but I feel like if this guy didn't exist, the world wouldn't be the same. Like yeah. you know how they, you know how they say like if you step on an ant in the past, it fucks up the universe. If this guy wasn't here, I think it would fuck up the universe. Dude, Joe Exotic is like he looks like Steven Tyler and Hulk Hogan fucked, and he has teeth like an like a marmot. Yeah. And he's just like, and he's all, he, he kind of looks like the witch from Snow White, but with mad tigers. You know what I'm saying? I like when the lady got, uh, the lady got her arm ripped off and he just puts on an EMS jacket. <laughs> and then he gets it and he goes, I'll never financially recover from this. Yo, someone's in your yard without an arm, dude. I'll, I'll never financially recover from this. <laughs> Fuck your dollars for a second. Your, your boy, or girl, whatever the fuck, has one arm. Also, came back to work with just a nubby arm. In five days. Who is that? Who is she? Philip Rivers? This guy tore his ACL. He played on Sunday. This bitch gets her arm ripped off, and she's like, yeah, I'm back feeding the Tigers. She's starting. She's starting this week. Yeah, that, yo, yo, that bitch is insane, dude. Also, they gave her the option, like, yo, do you want to do some surgeries? It's going to take a couple months to get your hand back to it. She's like, just cut it off. What a fucking idiot. She's, I I'm mean, she's sorry. Like, it's I'm gangster sorry. shit. It's gangster shit. But yeah, also, come off. Yeah, if it was 1907, I'd be like, cut it off. Yeah. Dude, what are you doing? I take a little time off and give me my goddamn arm back. I don't care if it's all fucked up. I don't want one of these. I don't want it. I don't want it. I'm sorry. If I have a choice to have this, yeah, to have this over this, I'm taking this. Also, Sorry. instead of if I did have to have this, at least put one of these on there. Yeah, this put is a, a this is a hook. Put a Mega Man arm on there. Put, put a hook on it. Yeah. Put a hook. Hook up. Hook some stuff. Then you could grab the meat for the tiger and just chuck it over your shoulder. And just be like ah. Bah. Yeah, I got a also, hook now. Also, that guy had over like three hundred tigers. Why do you need three hundred tigers, dude? If I went to a tiger zoo. I don't need to see 300 tigers. I need to see maybe six. I saw one tiger in Disney and I was like, yo! Like, if there was 300, I'd be like, this isn't as cool. Like, I've, now I'm... What is this? I've pet a tiger, obviously. You know that. Yeah, and you're part of the problem. And that place... <laughs> that place zoological? What, what, Mario? That's where yeah. I went. No. Yes. You went I to went, that one? I went to that one. And I met a, a white baby tiger there named Deepa. Deepa? Her name was Deepa. And I got to pet her and all that shit. Like a she, like a like a fucking Spanish girl saying deeper? Yeah, yeah. It was Deepa, Deepa, Papa. Deepa. Oh, go Deepa. <laughs> um Damn, that's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah, so I went to Zoological owned by Mario uh Tony Montana, basically. Yes. And um Dude, how about it was dope. That guy's cut up a body, dude. Yep, and he was like, I don't know that like, I don't know where the body went. Most we, normal one on the show. We lit it on fire. Yeah, most honestly, normal one. He's the most normal one, and he's confirmed and just casually talking about cutting cutting up a body, dude. With ease. With ease. This whole show's full of freaks, dude. Been arrested been arrested mad times, did all that shit. Also, Joe Exotic, right? Like I said, I'm gonna I'll repeat. Wear, I'm gonna repeat what I said, and then I'll, get I'll wear to my underwear. point. I don't wear underwear. Yeah, guy was in jeans the entire time. Doesn't wear underwear. His dick must be frictioned to shit. And then, shaved it down to the bone. I'm gonna put this locket on my cock. That's another thing. He's got a dick whistle that he hooks fucking padlocks to. He puts a padlock on his dick ring. 
I mean, you know much? how gay that is. That yeah. might be the gayest act. But it's a of gay. It, it's gay boss. Oh my yeah. It's gay boss. That dude is so gay that he's straighter than me somehow. Like and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I was saying on the stank too. I was like, there's no way that you can get me to get this, take this job. That here are the here are the incentives. You get to work 24 hours a day. Get a chance to be eaten and mauled alive by a tiger. And this guy has to suck your cock and fuck your butt. Not only that, but there's a 40% chance that you're going to marry him. Yeah. And then he's going to take your last name and become Joe Vag- Vagil Chuck Maldonado Passage. Or whatever the fuck his fucking name was. <laughs> this guy would just marry people and take their names. Just taking last names. Like, yeah, he's taking everything from these guys, man. Their last name? Let him have that. Yo. Everything was wild, but I have to say this. Carol Baskin killed her husband. Yeah. We're going to get sued. By who? Carol Baskin. That bitch Everyone's everyone. saying it. Everyone's saying it. She, she killed su- her husband. Dude. Hello, kittens yeah. and cats. cats Hello, and cats. kittens and cats. Uh, I just got back from burying my husband. I fed him to all the lions. And, Dude, uh, not only that, but listen, I'm going to repeat this, okay? Yes. First off, I'm going to say this. Joe Exotic yes. should work should work for the government. Yes. And here's why. Because back to what I was saying before, this man looks like Steven Tyler and Hulk huh? Hogan fucked, right? He's got random piercings everywhere. His teeth look like a raccoon's. And somehow, this man was able to convince not one, but two straight men into fucking and marrying him. What kind of... Why is this guy not working for a branch of the government that involves negotiation and, like, persuasion? I know. And then he convinced a straight man to get a super gay tattoo. Yeah, the tattoo said privately owned, and it said, what did it say? Like, exotic cockers. By Joe Exotic. Yeah. This guy, right above, a straight man, above his dick, got a tattoo that said privately owned Joe Exotic. How, what Russian mind game does this guy know how to play that no one else knows? Let me ask you this. Spo- spoiler alert for a couple seconds. One... To what oh what oh fuck moment was bigger for you when Howie gets shot at the end of Uncut Gems or when Travis just fucking blew his head off? Probably the Uncut Gems one, just because the way it was going with Travis, I'm like, this dude is gonna set it off. He was not really having a good time down there. And then once they started to go into like, oh, Travis was like banging every girl on the ranch. I was like, I was like, oh, all right. I was like, this guy is going to like lose it, dude. Ah, God. The fact that you see the guy just go. Oh, yeah, that was intense. That was crazy. Travis. Travis. Yeah. Travis. You don't recover from that either. Yeah, that's a fucked up... That was a whole fucked up situation. That whole documentary is just wild, dude. I don't know how... Like, when it was over, I was so relieved. I was like, thank God there's not more to this. Because this is so much shit. That, like, how can there be more? I know. And it was... It wasn't just a little more. It was a bunch more. It was a lot of more. It was a lot of more. And then the other thing that was wild, too, was Carol Baskin's new husband, very smart... Biggest fucking cock on earth, though. Oh, what a... Yeah, that she... Oh, God. Fat ears on him. Disgusting ears. He looked like a detective from, like, 1940. He looks like the guy in that famous painting where, like, he's holding a pitchfork standing next to his wife. 100%. 100%. Just like that guy. Yeah. I could never date somebody who had a closet full of leopard and and tiger striped clothes. I'm like, this Uh fucking bitch is crazy. Dude, I've been saying that. I, as soon as we saw that, which is like, I have, I have everything cheetah or everything tiger and like this cat print, whatever. I was like, yo, if I ever walked into someone's house and they have everything of one thing, 
I'd be like, this person's fucking crazy. And that goes for like sports fans. That goes for whatever. Like I'm a Giants fan. Diehard Giants fan. Love the Giants. But if I walk into your house and the walls are painted blue and the moldings are red and there's pillows, there's helmets, there's jerseys there's, in the same room, I'm like, this person's out of their fucking mind. What the fuck is this? The worst is when there's couples that are like that, though. It's like everything will be like Ranger themed or like I was, like, I was like, yo, this isn't like a Madame Tussauds fucking art gallery here. Like, yo, put some fucking regular furniture in here. Yeah, dude. Just put up a random painting of like a flower or some shit. God damn it. I, I, the craziest takeaway that I took for, away from Tiger King is that the real Tiger King is Carol Baskin. <laughs> Why? Because she won. She did, kind of. She at the got- moment. Also, how moment. how big of a fucking douche is Jeff Lowe? Ugh. Affliction. He's got the Hulk Hogan do-rag going. With he's a got, hat. With yeah. a hat. Yeah. And he's like, I'm going to hire hot nannies. And his wife just... Pregnant. Is, yeah. And just like another cuck. Who's just like, yeah, I can tell that she's not really cool with him banging other girls, but she's like, whatever. And this guy's just like, yeah, I'm fucking... I'm the man, dude. He's like, yo, let's do party bus tours. We're like, we'll just put little tigers in the party bus. Kind of dope, though. I would have called that mad that they're out of business. Yeah. Because if I can get drunk in Vegas and take a fucking bus from, like, the Luxor to Caesars, and I could pet a tiger during that time, they're going to get a lot of money out of me. I have physically pet a tiger, and I haven't been more conflicted. In my entire life. Did you did you want to own it? Yeah, I wanted to take it home. I would have bought that tiger right there. And then I heard yeah. a tiger. In my head, he was like, this tiger, like five grand. In my head, I'm like, oh my god, I could buy a tiger. Yeah. I don't think you can in this state, though. Fuck no. They find a tiger in your house, you're going to jail for mad long. Yeah. Dude, I wouldn't even want a tiger. Like, you Bro, know how much it's- fucking they eat? It's hard, it's hard enough to find an apartment that takes fucking dogs in this fucking neighborhood. <laughs> it's, like, alone, uh, it's like, yeah, I got a tiger. You can't even, like, look up... <laughs> you can't even look up apartments that are, like, uh, pets allowed. It's like, yeah, we take small dogs and cats. It's like, all right, what about ligers? Yeah, what about a... Which, by the way, didn't even know that was a real animal until this documentary. And then I love, it's like, he'll grow to be 1,100 pounds. I'm like, dude, this thing is a dinosaur. Yeah, I don't have room for another lamp. Where am I going to put a fucking 11-pound fucking tiger? There were many times, though, where I was watching a documentary, though, and a tiger would go, meow. And I'd be like, oh, my God, it's adorable. Yeah, I mean, I want to hug the shit out of a tiger. Let's not get that, you know, mixed up. Okay? Also, Carol Baskin. This woman is so terrifying because she's so fucking delusional. She literally, in, is, in the same sentence, goes, she goes, um, we're trying to shut down Joe Exotic Zoo because what they're doing is taking these animals for financial gain and uh, they're supposed to be in the wild and then keeping them... At their zoo until they die. And then literally, immediately after that, goes, over here at Big Cat Rescue, we're providing a safe haven for tigers uh, to spend the rest of their lives until they die. I'm like, that's the same thing, lady! Yeah. How do you not see that? You just said the same words. The other thing I wish happened is that I knew about Joe Exotic's internet show because I would have watched that show every fucking night. If people knew about that show, he would be the biggest. He would be running for president every year. Yeah. Which I can't. He, he ran for president. And Dude. actually believed he could win. Yeah. And, and then. He ran for governor. And then you got morons getting interviewed. It's like, it'd be nice to shake things up a little bit. Those people need to be lobotomized. Yeah. Because. I mean, is that the right way to say that? Yeah. Give it, get, a lobotomized. Lobotomized? Yes. They need to be Shutter Island. They need to be... You know, I still haven't seen that movie. Well, you gotta see it. Sorry. I know. Well, I need to... I mean, people can get lobotomized all day. You know, I've seen yeah, One yeah, Flew yeah. Over the Cuckoo's Nest. There's some lobotomy in that show. Chief, you gotta put the ball in the basket, Chief. Put your hand in the air, Chief! Don't you wanna watch the game? They're, everyone's 
so good in that fucking movie. Uh, I that movie's great. Fantastic. I had to read that book in high school, and I didn't. And then they we watched the movie. Yeah, we read the book and watched the movie too. Yeah. Also, Catcher in the Rye. Somehow passed those tests, but I barely read it. Dude, a book. A book so overrated. Where do where do schools get off on assigning summer reading? Summer. Do you re- think I'm gonna do that? I'm. Ne- I've never read a book in the summertime ever, and I would never, and I will never. Dude, I barely have read Street Signs in the summer when I was a kid. You gonna ever read a book about fucking of mice and men? You think I'm gonna read a book about mice? I don't want to read and, a book and about mice and a, guy, a, and a guy has a jelly glove. What? He has like Who? a glove. Some guy had a glove that he put jelly in and would like. I don't know what it was about. I don't know what that was about. And then you got to shoot your like slow brother in the back of the head it's down by up. a river. Like, come on, man. He, uh, you know, because he killed someone. I know he killed someone. But he's, you know. But he's not all there. He's got some he's stuff. He's got stuff. He's got tons of stuff. He's got stuff. He didn't mean to hurt nobody. It's a I don't want to hurt nobody. I'm just, I'm just floored. By the Tiger King stuff. Tiger yeah. King is the best Netflix documentary also, ever. It's better than Making a Murder. I'm very, yeah. I'm very conflicted with the whole zoo thing. Second. Like, I, I think that zoos should exist. 100%. You know I want to go see a giraffe. Don't tell me that it's fucked up. Yeah, like, I'd like to see a gorilla just slap the shit out of the fucking glass and scare That's another people. thing. I want to go on record and say if Harambe was never killed, none of this corona shit would have been happening. Okay, that's not related whatsoever, but we'll go with that. Yep, I'm telling you right now. If Harambe never got killed, coronavirus wouldn't be happening. Butterfly effect. Boom. Got him. Tell me I'm wrong. (laughs) Tell me right now I'm wrong. (laughs) You're wrong. (laughs) I don't think so. I know you don't. I'm willing to stake my entire life's work. Why is this finger? Oh, okay. My entire life's work. I couldn't get my fingers to touch. Oh, that was very... I thought you were ETing right now. No, 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 no. If Harambe was still here, he would have figured out a way to stop this. I would love to have a gorilla, dude. Yeah, until... It- Remember the woman that had the orangutan? The thing ripped her face off, and then she looked like a... like a Dude! Yeah, she looked like a melted candle. Do you remember the thing I sent you on Instagram of Dude. the guy? There was a guy. There was a man. There was a bo- there was a ma- a boy who has now grown into a man, and he went out into the wild on a snowmobile, got into a fight, a literal fist fight with a bear, and it ri- make no mistake, ripped his face off of his face. Yeah. He had no face and killed the bear, and then recorded himself telling a story. Face open. He had an open face. The fact that his mouth was able to produce words was wild to me. He was like, I don't know what happened. It came out of nowhere. This eye's all the way over here. Gone, just dangling. His face is open. He looked like a skeleton. He looked like a plate of spaghetti. Yeah, it was It was just gross. random shit and blood everywhere. And he just... And then... Uh, how did... Uh, how did it work? How did his face work? There wasn't. A, it wasn't a face. It was a bloody hole. The whole thing. It looked like somebody, like it looked like he swallowed like three M80 firecrackers and they blew up in his face. Yes. It it looked like he stuck his head into a box of dynamite and just set it off. And it was the most insane thing I've ever seen in my fucking life. The guy's face was off. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm not I'm down with a zoo. If that animal was in a zoo, it wouldn't have ripped anyone's face off. No, but here's the thing. The thing that's fucked up and the point that I wanted to get to before is that I'm down with zoos because I think they serve a purpose as far as like educating like the general public on animals, blah, blah, blah. Now, it's not the best place for these animals to be, obviously, but I do think some of them are necessary. But there is absolutely no reason why... There should be more tigers in captivity than in the wild. How the fuck does that make any sort of sense? And also, like I said, why the fuck do you need 300 tigers? Yeah. Dude, if you have two tigers, we get it. 
Three hundred tigers? I'm just confused. It's mad fucked up too. It's like the thing that's fucked up is when they would have the baby and they would just grab it with like a a grabber hook, and like, like a stick, yeah, and and drag it through the fence. Like, all right, we got to get it detached from its mom real fast. I was like, that thing's still gonna grow up to eat your fucking asshole out. Yeah. <laughs> I like when uh, Joe got dragged by the uh, got dragged by the tiger, and he was like, "I'll shoot you right between the fucking ass, you bitch!" Yeah, <laughs> calling a tiger a bitch power move. It's also hysterical. This guy called the tiger a bitch. Yeah, which that's what he did. The tiger isn't a bitch. Let's go on record. Okay. How, how long you think you last with a tiger? Me? How long would it take for them to chew through this bone? Cause I could. Ju- this is all I have. About two seconds. They'll snap that. Th- they'll snap that thing in half. Dude, I literally would just go like this. He'd be gnawing on my hand, and I'd just be throwing punches at its face. But I yeah. would die. I would bite it back. I would just make a loud sound. Cause I try to have d- sex with it. You try to. Well, I'm not saying I would succeed, but I would try. I'd be like, oh yeah, oh yeah, and then maybe be like, eh, what's this guy doing? This guy's yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Just and get fully it, fully naked, and they're like, wait, what? Yeah, and then I would want it to spread throughout the pride. Like, don't attack him. He's going to try and have sex with you. And yeah. then it's like, oh, now I'm no, now I'm the alpha. Now I'm just walking around just all fours for no reason. I don't think that would work. Myth busted. No, I think some tigers, they get into heat like dogs. And they'll when they get horny, they'll take what they need or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Me too. Yeah, but they get. Wait, it. that just sounded wrong. Uh, uh, <laughs> You're talking about in a in a tiger cage. In a tiger cage, yeah, not in real life. Yeah, not that you would. Uh, mm, I don't know. I don't think we're getting out of this hole. Nah, we'll f- we'll fix this in post. I go ahead. I'm glad you said it, and not we'll me. F- we'll fix it in post. People know what I meant. It was as if I was a tiger man. If I was we're a tiger about- man. Tiger prison here. We're Tiger prison. About. You know, I gotta, I gotta get something. You gotta. <laughs> it's prison rules, dude. I gotta protect myself. This yeah, yeah, man. I understand. I get it. Don't worry about it. That's all I was saying. Yeah. What is on your sweater right now, by the way? It says anti-bully watermelon clubs from my buddies over at Koala Jeans. It's a, it's a club that supports non-bullying. All you. What's bull- the watermelon? That's just like it's just like a cute little excerpt that the kids made. This is this is this is created by a child. He created this actual thing called the Anti Bully Watermelon Club. You can Google it, and it helps uh, you know, raise awareness on bullying and stuff like that. And watermelons. And watermelons. It would be like if me and you made like oh like the rock star dodgeball team. It's like we're not rock stars, but it's it's our club though, you know. Oh, that's what it meant. It's like so it's like a mascot, right? 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 It's not saying don't bully a watermelon. That's what I thought at first. No, I was no, like, no, no, no. Because I I like watermelon, so I was kind of concerned. I was like, who's just yeah. talking shit about watermelons yeah. right now? I'm a big anti bully guy. Yeah, because I was bullied, dude. I really <laughs> I really worry about when I'm a father, and if my son comes home and goes, these kids just won't stop messing with me. And then at first I'm like, you know, you gotta. Stay in your ground and like whatever and you try to do the dad thing and like tell him, but he just gets tormented every day. And at a certain point, you got to go up there and you got to start punching kids' heads off. I will knock a kid's head so clean off of their shoulders. And then when their dad shows up, I'm going to knock this fucking head off his fucking shoulders too. And if I'm not big enough to knock his shoulders off, I'm going to blow his fucking shoulders off. Maybe. And then I'm going to blow him. Did you off. mean, did you mean blow or blow? I meant, bl- I meant blow. Dude, I just watched Tiger King. Everything could be settled by threatening someone to shoot their face off. Yeah, but everything was also settled in that documentary by blowing as well. Yes, there was mutual blowing. Mutual blowing. He was like, I would love to see Carol Bass come out here. I got six things for you. Yeah. I was like, this guy's a fucking maniac. The guy pulled out his gun and like shot a fucking, <laughs> like a blow up dog. I was like, this is what I want to do to Carol Baskins. Shut up. Yeah. Just shot a gun indoors. No one moved. He's like, this is my mother-in-law. Run, lady. This is funny. Yeah, that was another thing. Oh, my God. What a maniac man. That boy is a maniac man. All right. Um, Are we good on Tiger King? Yeah, why? 
I, I gotta address it. What? You had a fucking huge statement on your Instagram. Oh yeah, I did. I you did. had a huge statement on your Instagram. Don't want to. Not trying to take any credit for this at all. So I'm not gonna say what I'm. I'm gonna say, but I'm very happy that you're back. What was that? Because that was the most counterproductive <laughs> sentence. I've what ever I was heard. gonna say is I, I've been telling you for a while. Not just me. So I, that's why I didn't want to come off that it's not just me. But it's just like, yo. You like, egotistical bitch. I was like, yo, the people need you. The streets need you. The streets need you, yeah. The, the, streets, the streets need you. And I think it just needed to be a perfect, like you always said, like in time, in time. And, and finally the time has come. And so have I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have no idea. I love that so much. One of my favorite what? things. The time has come, and so have I. Oh, it makes no sense, but it's so it good. Makes no sense. Um, yeah, I put out like a statement uh, on my Instagram that read it, read it, read it right now. I'm not gonna read it. Yeah, it's very heartfelt. I think you should read it for the people <clears throat> that listen. It's not. It's either you're gonna read it, or I'm gonna read it. I'm not gonna read it, but I'll say what is in it. So basically, I'm, I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it. Why do I stop? Because I'm gonna. I, I, I want to add my own words. Well, here's the thing. I think it's more heartfelt if I paraphrase instead of just reading a script. Ah, uh, okay. From the heart, motherfucker. From the heart. Damn, I'm about um, to cry, cuz. No, but there was a day recently. Like, I always, for a while, I was like, I'm not going to go back to making those types of videos. Like, I don't want to do that. And I don't, I don't know. But anyway, so one day a while ago, I was looking at the channel and there's only 15 videos that have under a million views on the youtube.com slash Joe Sandigato, the channel that like I started doing all this shit from. Mm -hmm. And there's only 15 videos that have under a million views. And most of them are like really old ones. Like I had, I was getting millions of views until the end when I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to do it anymore. And I really focused on the podcast. The podcast is at a great place. And just during this quarantine and like trying to, you know, do more, stay active and do whatever. I decided that, you know, I'm going to come back and I'm going to start doing Tuesdays again and start dropping those videos. And you know what? Like when I draw, when I posted this thing, I feel like it's a weird feeling because this is the most, like there's 15,000 comments from people. It's wonderful. And it's been, it's been DM'd to other people 16,000 times. Yeah, bro. So like people are like excited about it and yeah, people man, are like, whatever. I am too. I, I, a part of me is really like, a part of me knew like at some point this day would come, but like, I'm just, I'm really happy for you. I just feel like it's, it's a weird feeling because I, I always felt like I didn't want to continue doing the same exact thing over and over and over and over right. again. But I do feel like even from like a, my work ethic, like how funny I am or like whatever, like I've come a long way since I've stopped doing those videos. So whatever I come up with now, I probably won't be as like, Ugh, I'm just putting this out and it's just like whatever. You'll be like, funnier. Yeah, and, and well I'll just be more and I'll be more like proud of right. what I'm putting out. Cause at the time I was just like I'm just like putting out bullshit right now. Right. But, you're welcome you're welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. Um but yeah, so Tuesdays are coming back. Let's go. Uh this Tuesday. So when this drops, I mean if you're listening to it on Patreon, then tomorrow the a video's coming out. Uh, and yeah, so we're going to try and keep that up for as long as possible. Drop those videos, you know And this is, this is how Joe works. All right. Listen to this. I just happened to, I just happened to drop a track, right? This guy drops that bomb. First of all, I know I was before you. Yes, yes, yes. My track didn't come out till later because I was mixing it. But it, the thing that was cool though, it's like, yo, it's like, all right, basement yard coming out one day. This guy got the Tuesday. I got music coming out. I've had two new songs two days in a row. We're just churning it out. We're cranking. I have to make a quarantine video at some point. What does that mean? Just like a music video that just looks so poorly shot. Do that. You know what? I'll say this. I think that... Fat titties out now. SoundCloud.com slash Daniel Fury. <laughs> I think that you should start dropping shit that people aren't expecting. That you've never dropped before. 
Because I feel like a lot of people are waiting for you to like f- find this like a sound. I don't know, not like a sound, or just like like if you were to drop a music video with like these songs, or you were dropping songs like every Friday, or you were like right. doing something like some sort of consistency with the music thing. Like I feel like a lot of people want that, and yeah. a lot of people are waiting for that. But and ones that are like produced or like shot in a way that you've never done before like maybe it's not your phone it's the camera that you have and you're like shooting these videos for it and like i don't know i feel like the people are waiting for that sort of thing so like especially now we're gonna be quarantined for at least another fucking two months probably like you got the time yeah it's like you, you might as well do it and now what I've, i haven't I was, made i haven't made two songs in two days maybe since i was 17 years old yeah, and there's no reason to stop, you know? You make a song every single day. You can make multiple songs every single day and only put out the one the one from that week that you really fucking like yeah. and shoot, like, a random music video to it. Yeah. Like, it doesn't have to be dope. You know what I mean? Like, no, it doesn't have to be, like, fucking crazy with some budget. I think the most obscure it is, it's, like, trying to, trying to flex during a quarantine is hilarious content, too. Also, not for nothing, but, like, if you were dropping your own music, you should fucking... TikTok that shit. Yeah. Because all it takes is one thing for it to go like viral. Yeah. And then, every, dude, and you're sitting on a landmine just because, like, everyone knows the Let Me Suck Your Titties song. Right. So, like, if you were to have another thing to go viral and then people go, and then people are able to associate, like, oh, this isn't just a random dude. Like, this is the guy from back in the day. Yeah. Once they make that correlation, it's going to make them want to follow. You know what like I mean? I, like, I dropped. I dropped corn titties on Twitter and that shit went fucking crazy. Yeah, I listened to that actually right before I came uh, here. So it's like... Dude, what's the song? The song that you have here that you made and it's not about titties. And I was like, yo, this shit is fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll send that one to you. I have it in my Dropbox. Dude, you should put that shit out. Yeah. Corn titties has over 250,000 plays on Twitter. That's fire. You know? So we're just out here. We out here. CEO Joe just about to fucking kill the game right now. Um, also, if you're listening to this on fucking... Uh, Patreon. Patreon. The Dusty Pink hoodies are available for purchase. <laughs> they should be available for purchase even if, even if this is like coming out as it regularly does on Monday. But it'll be like next Monday, obviously. But uh, go check that out. SantaGatoStore.com for the Dusty Pink hoodies. Um, they're really dope. People have been asking for them, so go check those out. People also have been asking about the light blue hoodies, the original ones that we made. And we'll eventually bring those bring those back. I don't know when. I'm not going to say next month. I'm not going to say the month after that. I don't know when. Um, but right now, we have the Dusty Pink ones. Go check them out. Go buy one. Go cop! You know what I'm saying? Rocky for the boys. Dusty Pink. All right? And we're going to try to come up dust- with some can- shit. Can you get me a Dusty Pink crew, please? Oh, I was going to say, you have a hoodie, right? Yeah, I have a hoodie. Yeah. I need the crew. Yeah. Crew goes hard with like all my easy shit. Yeah. Um. All right, yeah, and that's pretty much it for this episode, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I think so. Uh, but everybody over there, family, everybody's holding up all right? Yeah, everyone's good. That's good. That's good. That's what about good. Uh, the person that we talked about that uh, we both know who's got some sympathies? Oh, um, now there's three of them. Oh. Yeah. Which I'll oh, talk, I, which well, I'll I know. I know, you know one. one. Okay. All right. So there's three of them now. And they're gross. And yeah. they've all, and they've all lost sense of smell and taste. But they're not doing, but they're not like getting better yet. Um, a couple of them have gotten better. One of them still isn't better. And it's a little concerning. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I was going to go to Hastings. I'm not going. I wouldn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, probably but, not the best. Yeah. It's not someone I'm related to, though. It's just, it's it's a friend. Yeah. So, my family's doing okay, though. They're hanging in there. Good. Yeah. All right. Well, where can they find you, bud? You can find me at Daniel Priori on Instagram and Twitter and also SoundCloud.com slash Daniel Priori. Start getting this music bumping. Uh, also the stank, uh, we were, we're back. So, uh, go to, uh, youtube.com slash the stank podcast. We actually have our own tiger King episode up there. Um, 
it was really cool what I did with it, and I'm not trying to pat myself on the back here. It was actually a mistake. I did a premiere, and like 15 minutes later, and then I sat in the chat with people, and there was like 300 people in there, and we had like a whole bunch of like, it was just kind of cool. I didn't know you could do that on YouTube. Yeah, I was thinking about doing that for the the Tuesday video. I like think setting it and then one hundred percent you should do that. Yeah, <laughs> yo, because yo, people go crazy in the chat, and then yeah. if you're if you're in the chat too, just talking back and forth, it was awesome. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if we're gonna keep doing that. We might. I'm gonna talk to Frankie and see like if we want to release earlier or later in the day. I mean, the episode actually did really well, but everyone's quarantined, so. That's a pain. In the, that's a pain. But, you know, uh, but yeah, YouTube.com slash Stank Podcast, Patreon.com slash Stank Podcast. Um, me and Frankie are recording again on Wednesday, so a new episode will be out on Friday. Love you, and stay safe out there. Yeah, guys, go follow the show at The Basement Yard on Instagram and our Patreon, Patreon.com slash The Basement Yard. I'm going to record on some days, like a morning meeting by myself, uh, so that there's still content being put out there. And now we will have the like week ahead episodes back up on Patreon as well. Yeah. Um, I know some people were like wondering what the hell was going on, but we're trying to adjust to the quarantine and figure out how we were going to do it. So it like slowed up for a week or two. Um, but now we're good. We're back on track. New stuff coming Tuesdays, Mondays, Danny's dropping music. Everything's going well right now. Okay. So stay safe out there. Stay, he- stay healthy. Wash your hands and your ass and don't cook birds. Nah. <laughs>